Welcome back to this new inspirational video. Today I wanted to go over Renunciation as it was written by Neville Goddard. So let's see what he has to say first and then we'll go over it together. Now he wrote the following. There is no coil of character so dead that it will not glow and flame if but slightly turned. Resist not evil. Whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek turn to him the other also. There is a great difference between resisting evil and renouncing it. When you resist evil, you give it your attention. You continue to make it real. When you renounce evil, you take your attention from it and give your attention to what you want. Now's the time to control your imagination and give beauty for ashes, joy for mourning, praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. You give beauty for ashes when you concentrate your attention on things as you would like them to be rather than on things as they are. You give joy for mourning when you maintain a joyous attitude regardless of unfavorable circumstances. You give praise for the spirit of heaviness when you maintain a confident attitude instead of succumbing to despondency. In this quotation, the Bible uses the word tree as a synonym for man. You become a tree of righteousness when the above mental states are a permanent part of your consciousness. You are a planting of the Lord when all your thoughts are true thoughts. He is I am as described in chapter 1. I am is glorified when your highest concept of yourself is manifested. When you have discovered your own controlled imagination to be your savior, your attitude will be completely altered without any domination of religious feeling and you will say of your controlled imagination, Behold this vine, I found it a wild tree, whose wanton strength had swollen into irregular twigs, but I pruned the plant and it grew temperate in its vain expanse of useless leaves, and nodded, as you can see, into these cleanful clusters to repay the hand that wisely wounded it. By vine is meant your imagination, which, in its uncontrolled state, expands its energy in useless or destructive thoughts and feelings. But just as the vine is pruned by cutting away its useless branches and roots, prune your imagination by withdrawing your attention from all unlovely and destructive ideas and concentrating it on the idea you wish to attain. The happier, more noble life you will experience will be the result of wisely pruning your own imagination. Yes, be pruned of all unlovely thoughts and feelings that you may think truly, and thy thoughts shall the world's fair mind feed. Speak truly, and each word of thine shall be a fruitful seed. Live truly, and thy life shall be a great and noble creed. Again, one chapter, one page. Because that's the end of what he wrote here. But it's again, interesting, renunciation. The actual term, I think, originally, when it comes down to spiritual texts, came from Hinduism. In um, the Upanishads, they talk a lot about renouncing things, letting go of your attachment to things. So it's interesting that Neville Goddard here spoke about letting go of our attachment to negative, evil things. Now really think about it. In a way we're attached to the negative and evil stuff and it keeps haunting our minds and therefore we suffer. But if we learn to let go of what's bad and wrong, what we think is bad and wrong in our lives, and instead learn to focus it on what we really want through the power of imagination, we actually set ourselves free from the suffering that we were in. Now we can easily demonstrate this to ourselves. The more we practice it, the better we become at it. I want you to start using your imagination every single day and to completely become possessed by your own dream. Now what does it mean to be possessed by your own dream? If I talk from own personal experience, I can give you the following description. Every single day when I wake up, I have a choice. Am I going to focus on the negative or on the positive? I'm confronted by both. There's stuff I like and there's stuff I don't like. Now the question is, what am I focused upon most? Am I attached to the positive or am I attached to the negative? And depending on what I'm attached to, that will occupy my mind for the most part throughout the day. So you can measure that for yourself. What's your mind occupied by? The negative or the positive? Now the trick here is to use your imagination in such a way that you become in the habit of constantly and persistently seeing yourself where you want to be, how you want to live your life. Now at first it might sound vague, what does that exactly mean? Well, a simple example again for me is if I look at my own goals, what I'm doing is I'm 
focusing mentally in such a way that I know, okay, this is where I want to go with my goals in life, with my career goals, with my YouTube channel, for example. And then I focus on it in such a way that I actually feel motivated and compelled and like literally, like, what's the right way? I, I, I wake up and I, I just can't let it go. That's the point you want to reach. I can't let go of thinking and dreaming and imagining about what I want to manifest, what I want to achieve. And the beautiful part about it is that it always keeps me away from the negative. Every time I feel bad, obviously, I'm thinking or focusing on something negative. I'm confronted by something I do not like. That's why I feel bad. And it's an instant reminder for me that I need to change my focus. That's what's going to happen for you as well if it hasn't occurred yet. But you reach a point where by practicing this power of imagination, by deliberately imagining and thinking about what you do want, you start to notice when you feel bad, I'm thinking about what I don't want. And then it becomes a choice for you to go like, huh, I'm not going to stay stuck here focusing on the negative. I'm going to focus on what I do want. Yes, there may be obstacles. Yes, there may be difficulties. But what does it matter? All I'm called upon to do is to focus on what I intend to realize. I'm called upon to focus on what I want to achieve and as long as that has most of my attention I will grow in that direction. So we renounce the evil, we let it go. There may be stuff in your life that is not to your liking and let it go. I know it's there, it doesn't matter. It might be annoying, I know, but you have to learn to let it go mentally and emotionally and then become completely full mentally and emotionally instead with what you want with joy with love with passion with excitement with enthusiasm with all the good emotions and energies of the universe do you get what i'm saying here because if you make that different distinction in your mind you will be able to outgrow a lot of the issues you might face really really analyze it for yourself you'll notice that when we face something negative, uh, it might grab a lot of our attention and then we start to feel bad and we wonder why am I feeling bad and we don't even realize we're constantly thinking and inwardly talking in negative ways, we're condemning people and things, we're upset about them, we're frustrated with things. But all this time we also have the option to just simply focus on what we want. Where do I want to go? Hey, what's my dream about? What's my individual dream about? I'm gonna focus on that. And by doing that, I am automatically renouncing the evil of this world and in my personal life, if there's any. That's all there is to it. So if you learn to do this, you'll see some amazing results. There's some amazing things that can happen here because ultimately all these chapters in the book, The Power of Awareness and any other uh, student or teacher of the mind that is uh, talking about this power, we're all just learning how to control our own minds because ultimately that's what this is all about it's not about finding some magical like supernatural power to influence reality necessarily it's about finding the power of your own minds so at first it seems you go insane if you see negative stuff happen to let it go and just enjoy the positive inside your consciousness almost like it's not there we're not saying that you pretend there's no evil we're saying that you fill your own consciousness with good. You see the difference there? Usually it's filled with evil and good. And it's more leaning towards the evil. That's why we suffer so much. Now let's make sure we're leaning more towards the good. And then we'll have more joy and happiness throughout this physical journey. That's what it's all about. And that's what it means to renounce evil in your life. Now, if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing to receive inspirational videos on a regular basis. And with that being said, dear viewer, never forget that we are the dreamers.